This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com Babish. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Arcade with Alvin. Today we'll be making the Archon Burger from one of my favorite games, Final Fantasy XIV. To me, the Archon Burger is quite a feat. The recipe is contained in a book called Master Culinarian 9 and can be only crafted by a culinarian with level over 90. To me, it's one of the more advanced recipes in the game, and it does have a quite hefty list of ingredients, one of which is butter beef, which I did ask for at the store. They didn't seem to have that, but they did have Wagyu beef, so I was able to get my hands on two beautiful Wagyu short rib, which I'm going to use for the patty for this burger. I'm going to cut these up into small chunks, about one inch in a piece, and then these are going to go onto a tray lined with parchment paper into the freezer for about 30 minutes for these to freeze for about 75% of the way through. Typically, I'd probably cook this as a normal steak, just with some salt and pepper and some seasonings, but I am curious to see how this will affect a burger, and if it's going to be different than just using regular ground beef for a burger. While the beef has its time to hang out in the freezer, we're going to get started on the bun. Now, the recipe in the game does call for dark rye flour, which means I'm thinking this is probably a pretzel bun. So in a stand mixer, I'm combining 216 grams of bread flour, 146 grams of dark rye flour, a teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of sugar, two and a quarter teaspoons of cooked yeast, and give it a good old mix so that the dry ingredients can incorporate pretty evenly. Then I'm going to slowly stream in one cup of water while mixing this as well. This is going to mix on a medium to medium high speed for about five minutes until the dough comes together. I like to scrape down the sides just to make sure that everything is incorporated. Once the dough ball is looking good, in goes three tablespoons of melted butter to incorporate into the dough ball itself. This might take a while because butter is slippery, but it'll get in there eventually. And once the dough ball is looking good, it's going to come out of the stand mixer onto the table with a little bit of bench flour kneaded and rolled and tucked until it becomes a nice smooth ball. You can use your hands as sort of like a push and roll technique to tuck and stretch the dough so that it becomes a little bit more taut and smooth before you let it go into the bowl for proofing. This is simply a bowl just with a little bit of nonstick spray and some ran wrap on top just to make sure that this is all ready to go before it proofs in a little warm oven for about one and a half hours. Now this wasn't a lot of dough in the stand mixer, which means it might have not gotten the proper development it needed from the machine. So I'm going to do a safety batch and double the recipe, just to make sure that the stand mixer has enough mass to move around. Everything is still exactly in the same proportion as before, just double this time. Now the recipe for an Archon Burger also includes the inclusion of alien onion. Now I'm not sure what an alien onion is, so I went to the store and asked them for one. They just kind of looked at me a little weird and pointed at the regular onion. So I have here a couple of regular onions, which I'm going to turn into a nice caramelized onion jam. I'm just going to slice them up thinly. It doesn't have to be too precise because I like a little bit of texture in my jam. These are just going to go into a hot pan with a healthy knob of butter with a little bit of salt. Kind of cook these on medium to medium high heat for about 15 to 20 minutes until they start to get brown. All those onions are slowly caramelizing. I'm going to go work on the spice element for this burger because in the recipe for an Archon burger, potent spice is one of the key ingredients. Now in the game, the description of potent spice Spice reads like this, not for the weak of heart or palate, this powdered mixture of natural spices gives any dish a flavorsome kick, which I think means dry toasted chilies. I'm going to take a handful of these dried chilies, crack them open, and shake out the seeds because, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of chili seeds. Then the de-seeded chilies are going to get broken into pieces and put into a mortar and pestle, into which I'm going to crust them into fine bits as small as I can. And then I remembered, you should probably toast these chilies, Alvin. So I'm going to take these bits out, toss them into a dry pan, and toast them until it starts to get aromatic and the color color starts to bloom. These are going to go back into the mortar and pestle and actually crush up easier than before. But we're not done yet. This is an Archon Burger, a burger worthy of a very powerful being. And what kind of spice would that mean? I think saffron. Saffron is the most expensive spice in the world, which is why I'm only going to use a few threads of this and toss them into our toasted chili powder and give them a nice old grinding. Then also to bring out the color and flavor of the saffron itself, I'm going to take a handful of these threads and bloom them in a little bit of water. You can see as this water turns 
turns a beautiful golden color. And if you ever have the chance to do this at home, make sure you give it a whiff. It smells pretty amazing. And because the game says that potent spice is still a mixture, I'm going to add in a teaspoon of cumin and teaspoon of turmeric. Give this a nice mix and then pour in our crushed toasted chili and saffron powder into this. And I have to say, this looks like a pretty potent spice to me. Back to our onion, which have been caramelizing nicely on the stove. To finish these off, I'm going to throw in a couple of glugs of honey, let that caramelize and reduce till it gets sticky, and then deglaze with a nice glug of red wine vinegar. I'm hoping that this will be a nice flavor component to our butter beef patty, which we are going to work on right now. Our butter beef has been sitting in the freezer for 30 minutes. To this point, it is about 80% of the way frozen through, which means it's the perfect texture for grinding into ground beef. I like to use a food processor instead of the meat mixer attachment because honestly, I think this does a way better job. I'm putting the beef chunks in there, making sure they're spread out a little bit, and then just pulsing this until you get little pebbles. If the beef wasn't frozen, this would just kind of turn into a mush, but if it is frozen, it will turn into nice little pebbles that actually look like ground beef. Once both batches are done, I'm now going to season this with that potent spice mixture from earlier. Then goes this bright orange red paste and it's going to get mixed into the whole thing until everything has been incorporated. Now our beef has a slight orange tint to it and it does smell like saffron which is still pretty cool. While we arrange the rest of our components this guy is going to go back into the fridge just to chill. Back to our dough babies. These guys have proved for about one and a half hours which means it is ready to turn them into different kinds of balls. Out they go onto the surface kneaded, pulled, stretched, and rolled back into little balls to be proofed again once more. I'm doing this also with the second batch, which actually seems to be better incorporated than the first batch. The gluten is more elastic, and the buns that I rolled out of the second batch seem to be a tad bit smoother, which means it was true that we didn't have enough mass in the first time we mixed these. So the lesson is either fill up your stand mixer or make sure you have a smaller one before you do that. Now in the old days, if you wanted to make a pretzel bun, you used lye, which is not very good for you, but we're going to make a solution for that. I have here some baking soda, which is going to go onto a sheet tray lined with parchment paper and bake for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. Once those 30 minutes are up, this is going to go directly into a pot of boiling water. Oh, a little full there. Be careful. And into this water, we're going to lower in our proofed buns for about 20 seconds per side. I don't know exactly what's happening here, but the water is turning a slight yellow, which is probably a chemical reaction of what pretzels are. Once both of these buns have had 20 seconds to pre-gelatinize their starches, we're going to place them onto a sheet rack lined with a tray so that any excess water can drip off. Now the buns are going to go onto a tray lined with parchment paper, and they're going to get brushed with a little bit of melted butter and then sprinkled with a little bit of pretzel salt. These buns are going to go into the oven at 420. 25 degree this time. I think the butter is there to make sure that the browning does happen a little bit faster. These bake for about 32 to 34 minutes. After the little stint in the ovens, I have to say these buns are looking pretty good. They've puffed up, they've gotten really dark brown, and they do look like pretzel buns, and I've never made anything remotely pretzel-like before. But the rule number one for your burger is that if you have a bun, you must make it toasted. So we're going to cut these buns down the middle and give them a nice toast and a little bit of butter in a cast iron skillet. Now I found that for toasting burger buns, it can be tempting to go at a high heat for a little amount of time. But for a more satisfying crunch and a more even toast, I actually like to go the opposite, about 5 to 10 minutes on a very low heat, just so that I can get an even browning all throughout. Plus, it makes the bun extra crispy and will stand up to any juices that come down. Now that our buns have been handled, it is time to wrangle our potent spice butter beef patty, which I'm going to press carefully into a very, very, very large disc, accounting for any shrinkage that might happen during cooking. This is going to cook with a little bit of salt as seasoning for about 2 minutes minutes per side on a high heat. Oh yeah, there's definitely some shrinkage happening. Must be cold outside. Anyways, uh, for this recipe, it also calls for something called Avi Boss milk, which I asked for at the store. For some reason, they didn't have that either. So I just got some cheese because, well, burger is really good with cheese. This is just some high quality cheddar cheese, not American this time, because the description for Avi Boss milk says it possesses a unique taste, which I'm going to translate into a sharp cheddar taste. Four hefty slices go down, covered just to steam so that the cheese can melt, and this burger goes onto a sheet rack to drain for a little bit. To assemble, we're going to take the bottom half of our toasted rye flour bun and spread a generous helping of our alien onion caramelized jam. On top of that goes our butter beef potent spice patty with some Avi Boss milk cheddar cheese slices. And the rest of the garnishes are quite simple. Some tomato slices and the last ingredient in the Archon burger, iceberg lettuce, ladies and gentlemen, which they did have at the store. Hooray! Now it goes on the top bun, and I present to you the Archon burger from final- oh wait, nope, we're not done yet. There is one more ingredient 
three water clusters, which is described as a large crystalline manifestation of etheric water energy. So we combine dry ice and hot water to make really cool smoke effects. Now I present to you the Archon Burger from Final Fantasy XIV, one of my favorite MMORPGs of all time, and one of the biggest burgers I've probably made of all time. Let's just cut this through and give us a nice old cross section. Looks like the bottom bun could have been a little bit thicker as the top bun is still thick, but that does look like a good juicy burger. And surprisingly, when you eat this, through all that cheese, that beefiness, that bun, you can still taste the saffron. It's quite floral and interesting. I'm not actually sure if the saffron tastes as compliment to the burger or distracting it, but hey, maybe someone out there in the higher realms is really fond of this kind of thing. Let's have everyone in this studio give it a try, shall we? Let's cut this up, share it with the homies, and let them enjoy. Oh hey, my cue just popped. I've been waiting for two hours. Time to finally do this dungeon. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.